Hey there. Uh, I want to continue the line of thought I was on in the last message. Uh, some people agreed. It's like, you know, go 144,000. I felt like, Lord, am I arguing with you? Like to give you reasons to take us home. I'm trying to say, Lord, there's no reason for us to be here. Get the 144,000 out. <laughs> and it's true. You know, uh, I've just been in John and John the Baptist's ministry was not appropriate for it, it's a time of dispensational transfer where you're moving from the dispensation of law to the dispensation of grace. The law came through Moses. Grace came through Jesus Christ, grace and truth. And John's ministry was appropriate to prepare people for Jesus that he may be manifested. But then John had to recede in order for Jesus to preach the kingdom and present himself as the means of entrance, right? And so John, even God sovereignly arranged that he would be imprisoned and even beheaded pretty early on in Jesus' ministry. And it's because you could not have these two competing dispensations. John's ministry was to preach the law and say the axe has to be laid to the root of the tree and bring people to baptism to see they need an end of everything they knew in order to be prepared for something new. But, you know, you see even in the Gospels that there is a contention between the disciples of John and the disciples of Jesus over fasting. They're like, well, John's disciples fast. Why don't you? And Jesus said, because the bridegroom is with them. They don't fast. It, the, the children of the bride chamber um, aren't going to fast when the bridegroom is with them. But when he's taken away, they'll fast. And uh, he was establishing a new relationship, not just as the king, but as the bridegroom to his bride, which is the church, the law has nothing to do with the church. The law, in fact, Romans 7 says that it's adultery to be married to the Lord if we're still joined to the law. We had to die to the law that we may be joined to Christ and married to him. So again, John's law ministry has nothing to do with the church that Christ came to be the head of. It's very important to see that the ministry from one dispensation is not appropriate during the next dispensation. Well, where are we now? We are at the time of dispensational transfer again. Back then, the natural branch was cut off Israel so that the Gentiles could be grafted in and the, gra the Gentiles have carried the gospel for the sake of building up the church. The real focus of the gospel in this age, the church age, is the unsearchable riches of Christ for the nourishment of God's children to produce the church as the habitation of God, the building of churches in view. So it's not so much a matter of outward preaching and demonstration as much as it is of inward reality to supply Christ as the spirit, as light, as life, as food, as drink to the children of God that they may be nourished and edified, built up, comforted in love to become the habitation of God and to become the bride of Christ. It's a different kind of relationship, not the relationship of the lawgiver, the king with his people, but the relationship with the bridegroom, with his bride. Okay. And now we're going back to another dispensational transfer where you're talking about the king with his kingdom and his subjects. And Israel will be exalted in that place among his subjects during the kingdom but the gentiles also will be brought into the kingdom those who survive and those who are saved during the tribulation the sheep and the goat nations right it is an entirely different setup and the gospel that's going to be preached during the tribulation it's still the same gospel there's only one gospel all the way through but there is a different emphasis there's a kingdom emphasis and the gospel message, the riches of Christ for the nourishment of the children of God, for the building up of the body of Christ to become the habitation of God and the bride of Christ, the Ephesians kind of gospel is not appropriate. It's appropriate for this age, but it's not appropriate for the time of the tribulation because that's not the time of the church. There, it's people being sealed that they can be saved uh, in the in, into the millennium and as subjects it's not that they don't have the same relationship that we do we are going to reign with christ they are going to enjoy the kingdom but in a different way and we here's the thing we don't have a message to preach for this hour right at the time of dispensational transfer 
the previous dispensation becomes irrelevant. That's where John said, I must decrease so that he may increase. And John knew it, you know, and we're at the same place now, I think. That's what I'm getting is that we must decrease now. Our message, what are you going to say right now? Because here's the thing. If we preach the gospel for this hour, which is the gospel of the kingdom, really, we have to preach judgment. But the church has been given the ministry of reconciliation. It really blurs the line when we try to intrude into things that don't belong to us. Uh, and it makes like, you know, the confusion is such that right now, a bunch of the Grace Channels shared this guy in sackcloth and ashes in New York, who's preaching a repentance message that is much more compatible with the two witnesses kind of thing. Uh, it's not clear. It's not appropriate for now. It wouldn't nourish the church. Um, and it's not compatible with what we're doing. I'm not saying things go back under work during the tribulation. I'm saying that there's confusion. The, the message that we are trying to proclaim is not appropriate for the hour that we live in. The message of reconciliation when we're in the time of bleed over where the judgments are starting to be released. <laughs> and no, the seals haven't been opened yet, but we are seeing dispensational bleed. We're entering into that hour. And so this is really another sign that the Lord is about to take us home. Our message is not relevant. I mean, yes, you can still see people, but what I'm seeing right now is people's hearts are hardening because I've said that during times of crisis, you think that's the great golden opportunity to preach the gospel. And maybe for some it is, but most of the people I know, they, their defenses go up and they try to, they're trying to hang on to what's theirs. They're not ready to realize that this is the end. This is the beginning of sorrow and things are only going to get worse and worse from here. People are saying, no, we'll be out of this in a couple of months and we're going to prevail and we're going to overcome and let's have a whole new world religion and a new, I mean, you know, my Facebook wall is full of all these musicians and they're all rejecting God and they are all embracing the beast system they're, and, and excited about the paradigm shift that they think is about to happen. And this is not the time for the gospel of grace, for the, the way we preach it. I don't think it's I don't think that it'll have traction and it's not really the fault of us. You know, I said it's con there's confusion because the church has all this baggage. That's true. But also in the church age, God has not been so concerned with the outward. He's been concerned with inward reality. He's been concerned with the building up of the church, the hidden treasure. He bought the field to get the treasure and then he hid it again once he found it. We are hidden. The reality of things is hidden in this age. You know, we think God was so disappointed because of the dark ages, but he was still building the church. He is looking at the hidden, not the outward. The outward is under darkness and delusion. The inward, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory, is where the reality is. And that's what God is focused on with the church. But now he's about to move back to outward things, to the judgments in the earth and the manifestations of the kingdom. And that is not for the church. That's for Israel. So this is just a confirmation on that last message that I really believe that this is it. We are, this is the dispensational transfer. Um, and, you know, he said in Romans 11 that if you don't continue as the Gentiles in the goodness of God and in the faith, then he'll cut you off because it's by faith you stand. And that's not talking about the church. The church can't be cut off. The remnant won't be cut off. It's the Gentiles as the instrument for the gospel to go forward. It's going back to Israel. And it's appropriate for that because right now our message doesn't make sense. If we try to preach the judgments to come, we get into a different kind of gospel message. Uh, you know, this is the time of peace on earth, goodwill towards men, like it was announced at the birth of Christ. That is going to be the announcement of the wrath of God, and that is not the church's message. And I've done messages before too. In my like, if you look at my rapture playlist, there's a message that says you have to church, you have to change the nature of the church and her role in order to put her in the tribulation. Because if you put the church in the tribulation, then she's got to be calling down judgments. And that is not the church's role. That is not our ministry. We are ambassadors of Christ, beseeching people to be reconciled, having the message of reconciliation that God was in Christ, not counting their sins against them, the world. 
uh, reconciling the world to himself and not counting their sins against them. The message of the kingdom is a little different because it's got the element of the wrath of God in it. Again, it's not a works message. It's still a by faith through grace message, but there's a more severe element, a more pressing urgency because the kingdom is coming and the wrath is coming. It's not the church's message. So again, it's time for the 144,000, Lord. Bring them out and take us home.